year. We're now joined by Edgar Thompson, Orlando Sentinel. What a weekend it was. Miami won big against Bethune-Cookman. They were supposed to. Florida State with that dramatic win against LSU, but it was the Gator. It was the Gators in what they were able to do to a top-10 team in Utah with a nice win for Billy Napier to start it off. Edgar, thanks for your time. How big was that win for Florida? Massive. Uh, you got a rebuild here with Napier coming off a 6-7 and seven season. I mean, the Gators have lost, I think, 10 of their last 16 games, 5-7 of seven to end last season under Dan Mullen. Napier, you know, has been here nine months. They haven't played a game yet. And he's just been building this program in his, the way he wants it built. And we saw some, some glimpses of that the other night. The physicality and kind of resilience, I guess, those are things Billy really expects to see from his football team. He wasn't pleased with a lot of aspects of, of the game. Uh, he, he said people are ready to crown the Gators, and we got a long way to go to play to our standard. He said that today. But – He'll take that win. I mean, they I don't know that they deserved it. He even said we didn't deserve to win the game. And Utah's right on the doorstep and makes it throws an interception in the end zone with eighteen seconds to go from like the three. Uh I, the way Utah was running the football, they had time to run the football. So it probably a poor play call there. But anyway, the Gators escaped. The crowd was fantastic. It's one of the best swamp games I've been to in sixteen seasons now. Um, it's certainly in the top five, if not number one. I mean, it was that electric in that place. Sold out, biggest home opener crowd ever, 90,799, and they delivered. And the players, you know, rose the occasion when they needed to, none more than Anthony Richardson. I mean, the kid is a primetime player. Enjoy him while you got him. He will be gone at the end of the season, barring like a serious injury. He's, he's not NFL ready necessarily to step under center and lead a team. But, I mean, physically, I mean, he's there. He, he's just a freak and made some plays that are going to be remembered for some time, notably the two-point conversion play that's been played endlessly. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Anthony Richardson because, you know, the, the good and bad that we saw from him last year was he was electric running the ball and he has this fantastic arm, but sometimes when it comes out of his hand, you didn't know where it was going to go. It looks like they've really worked on that. I know that the, the passing game wasn't a huge part of the offense for Billy Napier, but what has been the, the kind of genesis of making sure that he doesn't, you know, have those, those really bad throws that he had last year? Well, I mean, they're just continuing to try to develop the position and, and his decision-making, a lot of it comes down to studying knowing what he's looking at, knowing where to go with the football before the football is even snapped. There's a, just a lot of mental preparation to play that position at the level, at this level, against these types of defenses and players. So a lot of it's that. But physically, I mean, the guy's arm is ridiculous. I mean, it truly is something to behold. I mean, he can throw the football with some velocity and he's got to take something off of that football occasionally. Uh, he isn't the most accurate guy, but I don't mean to say that like he's highly inaccurate either. He's just got to improve that some, but man, he can throw it. And just his running ability is, is just all kinds of things for him. Again, like the two point conversion, the guy starts rolling right. He pump fakes a guy, makes a 360 spin move, outruns a guy to the sideline, stops and just rifles this pass in the corner of the end zone like it was just nothing, just flicking it. Uh, I haven't seen a Gator quarterback. I mean, I, this is my sixth head coach in 16 seasons. I mean, Grossman I caught a year of, Trask, uh, Chris Leak, good quarterbacks. I mean, record-setting quarterbacks. Heisman, finalists in two cases. Uh, these these guys didn't have this kid's arm strength, and nor do they have his size. Trask was a big kid, comparably, but not this athleticism. I mean, Richardson's six four two thirty two, and he's built like a power forward. I mean, he's an unbelievable physical specimen, and it's just it's just the beginning. Uh, they're just this is the first start he's had at home in his career. I mean, think about that first start in your career. You're a Gainesville kid, ninety thousand plus top 10 opponent at national television and you perform at that level, that says something. 
Uh, Edgar, what was the swamp like as uh, Utah had the ball there at the end? They're driving downfield, obviously becoming a, a major threat there near the end zone, and then obviously the the huge interception. What was what was just kind of that sequence of events like in the swamp? I mean, it was that crescendo of, of uh, crowd noise or whatever was as much as I've heard in the swamp. I was here for the 2006 national championship season. And then I was gone for three of Tebow's years. Not a lot of competitive football games during that stretch. I mean, some, but really some of his biggest crowd experiences there were on the road, uh, Tim. But that 06 season, when Jarvis Moss blocked the extra points to East South Carolina, that was about as loud as I've heard the place. Reggie Nelson had a pick six against Bama that year. Incredibly loud. They beat LSU here with the rocker step and the jump pass from Tebow. Incredible energy those times. There were a couple games under Mullen that were pretty special. Auburn 2019 was amazing beginning to end. Uh, you know, McElwain beating Ole Miss in 15. Number three team, they blew him off the field. That was a wild night. Will Greer before his, you know, PD. Uh, PD, what is it? PDL for PDA? What am I? What's the word? For PD, PED uh, yeah. suspension. <laughs> so the point is, those were some moments. But this was like, I mean, it was something, man. I mean, people were to my 90, 1997 FSU Florida, 32 29 Gators, number one Seminoles, uh, Jacquez Green at the end, got him in position to win the game. That go, that's considered by many the loudest game in the stadium. 94 Auburn, Terry, um, Terry Bowden brought in an unbeaten team that, and they beat the Gators. That was a nutso game by legend has. I was not here for the Spurrier era. I'm sure that stadium was out of control back then. But for me, that was a really amazing experience the other night. And for these kids, it was too. And that leads to this, this the next thing is how do they come down? I mean, how do you come off that emotional high, recalibrate, not listen to the, all the great, how great you are, and get prepared for a Kentucky team that's going to be a challenging team? Now, they dodged a bullet with Chris Rodriguez, the tailback team. Stuff. He's, under, he's suspended his team 900 yard games last year. But Will Levis has a lot of buzz around him. I'm, I'm not sure I'm sold on him, but let's see how he plays. Kavasi smokes very good, they're always very physical. This won't be an easy game. Mark Stoops a great coach. So they go from one to the next top 25 team. But the Gators might be ranked tomorrow, too. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a heck of a game. I don't think there's any question they'll be, they should be ranked. And now, as you mentioned, Kentucky, it lose the game to Utah, which some probably thought they would. Now, all of a sudden, you're 0-1 headed into a team against Kentucky who beat you last year. It does make it a little bit like more of a brighter week, right? What kind of week? I'm sorry. No, I I, I say lose a that game. Brighter week. Yeah, well, a brighter week. A brighter week because you're not over. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, sir. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, these guys. Look, man, I'm not kidding. And I, I mean, I I've drank the Kool Aid with Napier in terms of the long range plan. I was all about Richardson last year. I think, in fact, I was on your show talking about him at one point about how transcendent a player he appeared to be, and then he kept getting hurt or whatever was going on there with he and Mullen's dynamic at some times too. It was, there was injuries and then maybe some doghouse elements in there. But point being, those two things I'm bought in on, and I'm even more bought in on them now. And you beat Kentucky if you're the Gators. You go to Tennessee on week four. That's not a not, that's going to be a tough game, but it's winnable. And then LSU, after what I saw last night, that's a winnable game on, on the 16th of October. You got Missouri before that, Eastern Washington, and, you know, I forget the other one. But, it, but you could be 7-0, and oh, my point is, going against LSU. Potentially. I mean, LSU, Georgia. Potentially two unbeaten teams in the Georgia game. Now, that's a long way down the road. <laughs> they got to get past Kentucky. And then you got to get past Tennessee, et cetera. But – there were signs the other night of a of a much improved team, and there are flaws. 
defensive front needs to improve, and I don't know where that's going to necessarily happen. I do like some pieces there, but not a lot of depth at that tackle position that has experience. So they're playing a 439 kid, uh, pound kid, Des Watson, the other night. I mean, this, you know, this kid is not ready to play that many snaps but they needed the body out there and he's got a lot of potential. Tyreek Sapp, number 94 is a, is a name to remember. He is a really good player. I think really, really good upside. And, but still it's like, you got to get better in there because you talked him out in the second half. You guys watched it. just ran it down Florida's throat. And then there was a goal line stand and then an interception. I mean, they were inside the five twice and didn't score any points. <laughs> Right, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So they dodged the bullet, but you got to win games like that um, if you're going to be the kind of team you want to be. Edgar, thank you as always. I'm sure we'll have you tapped in again a little bit more throughout the season. Edgar Thompson covers Florida, the Gators for Orlando Sentinel after their uh, exhilarating win against Utah to open up the season and the Billy Napier era. When we come.